In this final section of the chapter, we are going to look at signal attenuation. We can send waves, we know that, but the waves don't travel forever. There's a loss in power. We lose energy. So even your phone, you might be very familiar with this. It's great when we see green, full Wi-Fi, 5G, full phone signal. We are very happy. But maybe you go to certain places, for example, at the bottom of a car park. And as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the ground, maybe you are, I don't know, level, basement, don't know what, underground. This is ground, by the way. And the shopping mall or some building or school is on top. As you go deeper and deeper, you realize your phone signal starts to get red. Oh no, we do not like that. Why is it getting red? Where, what happened to our phone signal? Where's the 4G? Where's the data? Or if you are having a Wi-Fi, uh, maybe the Wi-Fi is on top here, then here it broadcasts out. Then eventually, by the time you reach the bottom, your Wi-Fi signal is also very low, very far. This is called signal attenuation. Either from a tower, from one place to your receiver, which is you with your phone, or from some cell tower on the ground, sending out a signal, and it will spread out as it goes further and further away. So that's the whole idea of signal attenuation that we will look at today. Now the word attenuation means a loss of power, a loss, decrease. Loss of power as your signal will travel along transmission path. So maybe you have a transmitter here to a certain receiver passing through, I don't know what, but you have a wave, electromagnetic wave or whatever that is traveling through a certain distance, a transmission path, and you will lose power. Maybe it is power 1 to power 2, which is now going to be a bit lower because of attenuation. So to detect the signal in the first place, your signal to noise ratio, noise means like background noise or things like that. Let's write here, background. It should be large enough. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear any signal. Imagine, no, if you hear my mic very carefully, you turn on the volume, you hear a background noise when I stop talking. You hear it? The shh. Now I'm going to mute my mic and see if you can hear anything. You hear the background noise? So in order for you to hear something clearly, a signal such as my voice talking to you now, your signal compared to your noise Let's see, where shall I write this thing? Here. Okay, so signal, power of signal over power of noise should be large enough. That is what this is talking about. Okay, we'll go more into that later, a little small equation to calculate that. Uh, but first things first, how do we, how do we, what is the equation? Is there equation for attenuation? Yes, there is. But before we go into attenuation, I want to introduce you a new unit called Bell. B-E-L. Now, we may not have seen Bell before, but hang on, hang in there. You will see something familiar. But first, let me define what is Bell. Bell is a, like a ratio. So we say, okay, you have something from transmitter at a certain point. After a certain distance, you go to a lower power. Why? Because loss of power. We just call it that. So there's a way to calculate that. We decided to take the log 10 of P2 over P1. And say, hey, we can use this to quantify the signal loss or signal attenuation. But Bell, the numbers are not so nice. So to get nicer numbers, what people did is, instead of using bells, we use what we call decibel. Ooh, what is a decibel? Decibel, the symbol we use is dB, the unit. Now, this one you want to write down. So a decibel is just a bell times 10 because it's called a deci. So this one is 10 log. Uh, log can shortcut as LG, uh, log 10. Uh. 10 log P2 over P1. Now this is an important one which we will use a lot in this chapter. Decibel. What is a decibel though? It's more like a ratio, if you want to think of it that way. A ratio between a certain position, maybe, a, maybe for example, an input signal, input power, after a certain distance, either traveling through air or maybe traveling through a wire. Ah, I should draw a wire. Ah, maybe here to here. Got wire or a wave through the air. It's a matter. We don't care what it is. As long as from one point to another, you got input. What you get on the other end, maybe you can call it, for example, an output power. 
And from there, we can calculate a difference, a ratio of both of these powers. So just remember, ratio, ratio, ratio. That's all. Now, conveniently, attenuation also uses the same equation. So let's write that out as well. So when we talk about attenuation, basically we're saying from P1 to P2, two positions, what's the change in power? We take a ratio, a log, n times 10. So let's write that down. So attenuation here is also going to be just 10. It's a ratio. Ratio of power, basically with a special log there. So this would be 10 log 10. P2 over P1, ah, yeah, same thing, lah, same equation. Attenuation in decibels. Okay, so this is going to be in dB. Okay, let's pause here and go think a little bit more about dB. That looks very familiar. What, where have we seen dB before? Hmm. This also brings another question to my mind. Why do we use 10? Why do we use log 10? What, did they just come out of the blue? Well, there are a couple of reasons why we use log 10 and you kind of have to know the reasons, surprisingly. They will ask you in past years. So here's the idea why we use log 10. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Let's go and look at the colorful chart. When we try to define what is considered loud for our ears, we use the decibel scale, for example. Uh, so you look here, what are some possible things? 10 dB is the sound of breathing. 20 dB, rustling leaves. 30 dB, whisper. 40 dB, the refrigerator hum, raining, conversation, city traffic, truck. All these are in dBs and you see it starts to get extremely loud here is when it starts to hurt your ears. But all, what does dB mean? Remember, end of the day, it is a ratio to compare between two things. What is the two things? For example, 140 dB is comparing between the explosion of a firework with silent room. How do I? There's nothing here. The softest, no, no sound that our ears can hear. So you're comparing with reference to a silent room compared to fireworks and you get 140 dB. Now, the reason why we db db is, remember, there's a lock. If we didn't db, we'll have a lot of zeros to deal with. For, for example, maybe this is like the um, power or maybe it's the intensity of a wave. Oh, wave, power or intensity. Because, you know, these are sound waves. And we'll have a lot of zeros to deal with. Wow, this one is 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. This one is many thousand. This one is many thousand. This one is zero. So we don't like to deal with all the zeros. So what we do, we lock, lock all the zeros. So that is the idea of of uh, log, uh, why we log. Because now instead of drawing many, many zero in all my calculation, I can say, oh, for example, if my sound intensity is, let's say, uh, uh, 10,000 times greater than a reference point, I can just say, oh, if I, if I log this thing, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, log base 10, of my 10,000 will be 4. But this is in bells. We want to decibel it. Okay, never mind. 10, so it's done, become 40. So instead of writing all the zeros, all we need to say is, oh, did it just get louder? That's plus 40 dB. Comparing between previous and current level, increase by 10,000 times, but convenience, we just say 40 dB. Much easier to write. Fun fact, by the way, you if you like loud things or you work in loud environments, it might be good to be careful to take care of your ears because exposure to loud noise over time can affect our hearing pretty badly. So as we look at earlier, normal breathing, mosquitoes, quiet office is about 60, 50 dBs. And I'm talking to you in the classroom, it will be about 50 to 60 dB somewhere here. If you are laughing, if there's vacuum cleaner or dishwasher, it will be up in the 70s to 80s. If you're on the road in KL or somewhere, 80 dB is around there, quite noisy already. But if you go to the red zone, be a little bit careful, make sure you wear ear protections. Lawn mower, tractor, got train, aeroplane. What else? Ah? Hammer, lightning, thunderstorm, stereo, rock concert, aeroplane, and of course, fireworks that is exploding quite near to you. So remember this dB is referencing two points, current level and I guess the lowest possible level that a human ear can hear if for sound. Ah. But what about signals? Let's go back to signals. Eh. Ah, here. So why we use log 10? The reasons they will ask you to usually explain. Here's what you can write. Reason number one, we don't like all the zeros. But you gotta use a 
better way to explain that, right? So reason number one, you could say something that the log, or log 10, provides smaller numbers for us to work with. So provides a smaller number for our ratios. Uh, for ratios, uh, so for ratio. Because what a log does is it takes a very large number, scales it down. So it's easier to calculate, easier to deal with. No need to draw so many zeros, it's just too much. And secondly, when we talk about gain of amplifiers, the log 10 actually makes calculations much easier. So you just kind of memorize this if you're not sure what that means. So the second point is the gain of amplifier here in series means you times 1, times 2, times 3. Basically, what we did just now in series uh, is found by addition. Found by addition of the log instead of multiplication. So it's easier to do gain calculations here. So the reason two is gain, and of course, smaller numbers, less amount of zeros. Now we talk a bit about uh, addition instead of multiplication. Right? What, what does this mean actually? Uh? Let's look at a specific case example with signal noise, a signal versus noise. So let's come over here. Let's say I have a transmitter and receiver. I'm not sending any signal yet. Uh. I'm not talking to the microphone yet, but there is already noise in the background. So maybe it's like a, a hiss in the background. You're just like, what is that noise? Let's call this some power of noise. Then when I actually start talking into a microphone, wow, 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 I have a big signal. Ah, hopefully the noise ratio is big enough. And that can be transmitted. Uh, let's see. Electromagnetic wave, transmit, transmit on it. And here I will have my signal, but also a bit of noise. Ah, like that, something like that. Ah, okay. And if you want to calculate things related from transmitter and receiver in relation to noise, here's what we can do. So let's say I have a certain dB at my transmitter. This dB, I'm going to call it the power at transmitter, but there's also power of noise. So we can calculate the signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio at the transmitter a hey, ratio right ratio what do we use ah bell decibel so we can think in terms of decibels so this would be something like 10 log i'll just write lg for shortcut this will be transmitter over noise okay so maybe it's something like i don't know 39 dB. Eh? dB is comparing two things? Yes, comparing between transmitter and noise. Background noise. Okay, okay. Then receiver. Also, you can have some kind of noise, right? So you can also do a ratio with noise, such as 10 log power of receiver to power of noise. Also got noise there, ma. Okay, okay. Um, but if you want to put together the whole thing, like when we do our calculations here, we are ratioing our transmission and re transmitter and receiver power. So how do we get rid of this noise calculation? Well, what you could do something is to combine both of this. Yeah, so maybe it's gonna drop down to 25 dB or something. But that is the total, uh, including signal plus noise all inside there. Here also signal plus noise, signal plus noise all inside. What's the original without the noise? So we combine it like that. We can do some fancy maths and say, hey, 10 log of transmission over receiver. Something like this, for example. Mm. But everything here is in terms of N. So if you want to, let's say, find the ratio of transmission over the receiver, you could do things like this. 10 log. PT over PN times PN over PT. Just add in a fraction, okay? It's because we have PN, PT, we have PR, PN. Oh, where is N? Ah? I feel like R is missing. Oh, here's R. My bad. 
when you have multiplications in logs, that's the convenient thing. If you ever have to multiply things, calculate gain, do signal noise ratio thing, you can see the multiplication and you're just like, yes, logs can easily split this up. So this will become log PT over PN plus the whole thing again, log 10 log PN over PR. Nice. So we already know the values, the decibels of both sides here and here. We can just add them together and we know the ratio. So it's another way of dealing with ratios uh, if you have logs involved in the ratio. This is just one example. Don't need to memorize this. Don't worry, you have a pass here to, to experiment with this later. This is just to illustrate that you can uh, convert multiplications into additions when there are logs involved. Moving back to this. One more thing you need to know is attenuation per unit length when you see this word appear in Parsius. This can be applied to either cables or, hmm, I don't know, air transfer, wireless transmission. But you're transmitting a signal from a one point to another over a certain length, L, for example. Usually it's in km, very long uh, usually, but you check your units. Uh, okay, attenuation per unit length, the equation here is just going to be attenuation divided by length. So this will be, oh, where to write? Uh? The ratio, <laughs> this will be attenuation. What is attenuation? 10 log P2 over P1 divided by length. That's it. Oftentimes, you recognize it when you see the unit that says dB per km. When you see dB per km, know that they're talking about attenuation per length. Over a certain distance, how many do you, uh, how much dB did you lose? Is it a negative 25 dB? per km. So each km you drop by 25 dB. That's just what it means, uh, an example. If you are designing a system of wires to send signal, you have to take this into consideration very carefully, okay? Or if you are designing where to put your Wi-Fi routers. This picture they are looking at is a picture of our school, actually. And <laughs> Wi-Fi in our school was terrible. Just like, you just cannot connect. You know why? If you look at this diagram, oh, the old Wi-Fi in operation was on this particular floor, there was only one. Only one! So if you are a human on, let's say, lab 3 over here, and you want to connect to Wi-Fi, do you know how far the Wi-Fi have to travel or not? From there all the way until here, the attenuation is just, I don't know, negative 40 dB. Basically cannot connect, la. you only have one dot, how to connect? Your Wi-Fi is not going to work for you very well. So... <laughs> Thankfully, over the pandemic, the school was forced to upgrade their Wi-Fi because a lot of people were using Wi-Fi to watch video, online meetings, online calls. So then a lot of new Wi-Fis were added and you can see all the different different spots. I'm going to highlight them for you. Now in every classroom or every kind of room, there is a new Wi-Fi. One, two, three, four. Ooh, new one here. Woo, everywhere. Beautiful. So then you're not just relying on one single router. Access point is a proper word. Whereas here, you see, it will spread out, spread out, spread out. Maybe this area, very strong signal. Lah. Here will be negative 10 dB. By the time you reach here, it's negative 35 dB. Signal is getting weaker and weaker. By the time you reach here, maybe all the locations around here is negative 58 dB. I'm just creating numbers. And it's just like unusable. Yeah, you cannot even load Facebook. You cannot, lock, you cannot even load Instagram. But now, you have many, many more routers so each router can basically take care of each classroom here got one here got wave you get wi-fi you get internet you also get internet and everybody is happy so it's probably very expensive uh <laughs> but i hope they figure a way to make sure it's worth it lah all right so this is the idea of attenuation the further you go away attenuation per unit length the further you travel from here to here for example there's some kind of attenuation. For Wi-Fi, it's a bit harder to calculate. For wires, we can do that pretty easily. To end off this video, I'm going to tell you one last application, or I should say an idea that you can consider that we use very regularly that relates to signal attenuation. So imagine you are this human at the bottom of this car park, this big, don't know, multi-layer car park under the ground, and you turn on your GPS. It's going to be very hard to connect with a satellite. Do you know what GPS is? Okay. In the sky, there are many, many, many satellites and they are always broadcasting a certain signal. The moment you turn on your phone, 
you will receive that signal. But how does it work actually? Now what I have here with me is my phone. I'm going to turn on the GPS. It's going to take a while to connect. Okay, my phone's behind me. I'm going to use this app to track the satellites that are currently above me in my area. So, whoa, look at that. There's so many satellites. Wait, wait, let me rotate to make it bigger. Anyway, the moment I turn on my phone's GPS, as you can see, I can rotate around and somehow the phone will connect with the satellite and using its own sensors detect which direction I am facing and of course it can pinpoint where the satellites are coming from so you look at the screen now huh? I should point it this way out here is north okay this is north so I'm gonna keep my phone there so there are so many satellites currently around me that the phone can kind of detect but you notice only a few are blue color right so what the GPS will do is all these I mean how the GPS works is these satellites are already broadcasting signals but the phone will choose, number one, find the strongest signal. Find three, actually. Three to four. And two, connect with three, or oh, sorry, four satellites to pinpoint your location, where you are. And what they're broadcasting is just timestamps. They're broadcasting timestamps. So you do, do some kind of triangulation all oh, from here to here to here. Where are you? So you look at the diagram, there are, there are circles. There are one which uh, my phone really likes and has connected. That's number 28 right there. Ha <laughs> hello. The rest are like the signal is a bit too weak. Oh, we have two. We have now two visible in our range. Oh, well, no, we have three. I should hold my hand higher up, right? So the attenuation is not so bad. So I'm pretty good now. I could probably run Waze or Google Maps and it will tell me exactly where I am. So it takes a while. Four visible. Perfect. Now the satellites, no. Now my phone knows exactly where in the world it is. Once you have connected to four, it's pretty good. I mean, it'll jump up and down depending on which satellites come into view. So if I stare at this long enough, I'll realize that the satellites in view will change over time. Some days you see this number, some days different number. It doesn't matter. All I need is four satellites that I, the phone can receive and talk to to tell me where am I? Ah? Five visible. Ah. Wow, do they have any satellite? Ah? <laughs> I'm not using any of it now though because I'm not running an app. But you see all the circles they draw? These are all the triangulation that the satellite will help the phone to figure out where is this human? Where am I currently? So I thought that was interesting. If you want to try it out, go download the app. Just look for GPS Essentials and you can probably see what are the satellites in your area and how many you will manage to connect to. Lah. But the main idea I want to remind you is that the signal matters. Not all satellites will have the same signal. You are trying to find the strongest. I mean, a phone is trying to find the strongest four so that it can connect to it. So maybe this one is negative. <sighs> By the time you reach you, are negative 50 dB. This one is negative 70. No, that's a bit too much. Negative 20 dB, wow, very strong. Oh. Negative 45 dB. Maybe another one far away is like negative 125 dB. I don't want to connect to that one. Useless. And oh... Hey, look, we have used some satellites in fix. We are locked on to the satellite. Oh, now the satellite is gone. Four in fix. Okay, anyway, I'm just gonna, you can just stare at this thing for a very long time now and see what's happening around you, above you, the amount of waves traveling through you at this moment. You can't tell it. You can't see it. You can't hear it. But your technology can detect all this communication happening. So I hope that was interesting for you, this whole chapter. Now we're going to move on to some examples on how to calculate attenuation uh, for all kinds of things. Satellites, wires, it's the finale. So go finish up this chapter. I'll see you in the next video.